Okay, um, hello everyone. Uh, we're just going to go over a bit of a tutorial on how to copy an object into different scenes and to make it look realistic. And unfortunately, there's no shortcuts, but um, every scene will require you to adjust different parameters. However, so I'm going to, I've, I've got two different um, extreme kind of scenes here. Uh, and I'm just going to explain how it works and how I do it. So I'm going to put this bike onto the onto these two roads here. So uh, assuming this is all already been cut out, this is one of the probably most difficult kind of cutouts you're going to do because of the spokes in here and all that sort of stuff. So uh, you can use AI cutting, but AI cutting is not going to fix this thing because um, this is just way too um, complex of a cut even for for artificial intelligence. So. There's no shortcuts around that cutting. It's unfortunately, you just kind of have to do that the long way. Um, once you've uh, kind of put it into a new background, this is a suitable background because you can see that the, the bike is diffuse lighting. It doesn't have any harsh shadows and that's key. You cannot put harsh shadows with a scene um, that has harsh shadows. That just, it would look fake very, very quickly. But this works. So first thing I'm going to do is just scale it and put it on the road in a believable manner. Um, let me just go back to where we were. Uh, probably about so big. Yep. Now the other thing is um, you'll see here that the sh light's coming from the right hand side, whereas the light in the background image is from the left. I can either flip the bike or I can flip the background to make that more consistent. So. This is just something you got to look out for, um, something that I do. Um, so now it's looking more um, in line with it. So what we do, we move the bike to the middle. Okay. Um, and now um, we adjust the levels on the bike so that it is um, a little more realistic. Now I'm just going to probably keep that size, but um, what we're going to do is with the levels, um, not, not the, the bike levels rather, um, you can see here that it, the road can, can get quite dark and the tires should probably get just as dark as things get around here. So I'm going to make the, the bike a little bit darker there, but not too dark. You don't want it, that's fake. And that's too bright, so somewhere in about there. Okay. Now, of course, the bike looks like it's floating, and that's because shadows are an important part of this whole thing. So there always needs to be a shadow layer in between these. So create a new layer that is a transparent layer and place the layer. We'll call this a shadow layer so that you can see what's going on. This is the bike layer. That's the background. BG for background. Yeah. So now the shadow layer, it's got nothing on it, so it's a transparent background. But choose a um, soft brush. Okay, about so big. Yep. Now we're going to draw the shadow. Because it's diffused lighting, it doesn't have harsh shadows, so we just need a soft brush to just lightly create the shadow. Okay, so just pick the color black. Um, don't make it 100% opacity, bring that down a little bit so that you can kind of um, adjust that. Now, what we're gonna do is um, adjust the aspect ratio of the brush. See the brush right now, it looks more uniform with the road, um, meaning if you're gonna draw shadows, they'll be a little bit more realistic. The other thing that we want to do, base that line of shadow on the on the bike. So I'm going to angle this. There's an angle function here. See, so I've just angled the brush to be the 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 same angle as the as the bike. So now I'm just going to enlarge the brush a little bit more. And if I start drawing that, I'm just literally just going to push that a few times. Okay.
And it's all ready. Okay. So if I zoom out, you can see the shadow of the wheel over here and over here, and a little bit of lighter shadow there. And that's, and that's enough to make that look realistic. Look, if I switch that off, the bike is floating and now it's on the ground. So that's all you need to do. Um, that one's straightforward and easy because the background is suitable for the bike. And that's, that's one of the key things. You've got to find a background that's suitable to the object that you're placing in there. Uh, the lighting has to be similar. Let's go a little bit more tricky now. Uh, that, that's all there was that needed to be done there. But suppose you're putting the bike on something like this. There's a, there's sunlight evident in this. Um, let me um, now the sunlight is the hard part of this thing because that means firm shadows. Okay. Now one thing that's this is kind of almost mission impossible because of, to get 100% realistic because of, because the, again this is diffuse lighting versus sun all right so you can see the shadow of this bike here it has a very strong harsh shadow that's what we're going to need over here too so you can already see that the that the wheel doesn't have that um, doesn't have that strong defining um, shadow um, on it so unfortunately it's not going to be 100 percent but i'll show you what would what you would do for an environment like this. So I'm going to give it a lot of shadow. You can see I've darkened it a lot because what, this side of it is going to be quite dark. Okay, and this side of it here is going to need a lot of sunlight, so I'm going to make that even brighter. So I'm going to bring those two in. Okay. And um, probably just um, go with um, reducing the brightness and then increasing the contrast as well. Actually, that's too much. I'm going to leave it there. Don't worry about that. Now, um, this is where it gets a little bit interesting to do this shadow because um, what I'm going to do is uh, duplicate the layer. So I've got two bike. Um, layers there now. I select all of it. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way. I'm sure there's a way to select um, all the non-alpha transparency, or is there a select? Um, no. All right. So I'm, this is what I do to normally just select everything. I just do that, and it's. It's selected every pixel except the alpha. So then I just, um, yep, fill it with black. So I, just, I selected every pixel that was visible and I filled it with black. That's all I did there. That's the shadow. Now I'm just going to re-angle that so that it is a, um, so that it is a, a shadow that's on the ground. Um, rather than some vertical standing up. So uh, layer transform. I'm going to flip this vertically. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to play with the angles here. Um, I'm just going to shear this one a little bit like that, as such. Uh, bring it in here. See if I can align the the tires. Um, remember the shadow has to sit between those two layers, between the foreground object and the background object. Right? And then I'm going to um, rotate that okay, so that the wheels are aligned. Okay. And those wheels are aligned. So this one's uh, trickier, as I say, because the, um, the lighting is entirely different. Um, so again, still just playing with these shadows, making them look as realistic as possible, just finding the right angles. And that's really the time consuming factor of this thing. Um, 
I'm going to rotate this a little bit more so it sits with the wheel. Right. Okay. So right now, this looks reasonably consistent. Uh, now, we don't want it pure black there. So I'm going to about... It's going to be somewhere about there. Okay. Now, you can blur this a little bit if you want. Um, you can say, um, just add a little bit of blur to the shadow. Just a tiny bit, because you can see that that shadows there is quite sharp as well. So it's actually, a, um, you don't want to, we want to be consistent. Okay. So, you know, 96% black, it lets, you can still see the road. But, um, that is, I think, reasonably realistic because you've got high contrast over there in the background. You've got high contrast on the bike. Just one more thing to make it look a little bit more integrated into its environment. Um, you can see that the environment has a yellow tinge to it. The bike does not. We need to incorporate that yellow tinge onto the bike. So what we do, we go to colors, color balance. You can make the yellow come out. Um, sorry, that's the wrong one. You can make the yellow come out like a little bit like such and make the shadows, right? See, so you can see that it's got a yellowy tinge here now. And if I, so that's a color balance difference. See, now versus before. The new versus before. You see the difference? I'm just doing an undo on that and redo. So the, this one has looks like it reflects a little bit off the surface of the um, environment. Another way to do that, I've, I've just undone that. Another way to do that is to, um, one. Of, it's actually my preferred way, I duplicate the layer, I colorize, there's a colorize function in GIMP and Photoshop that um, lets you make it whatever color you want, and I'm going to make it that color yellow, so I'm just going to choose that yellow. Um, the lightness should not be, the lightness should be zero. Um, so that it remains the same lightness, right? Um, so that makes it the same tinge. Now, because I've got two layers here, and this was pure intensity of, of that, we don't want that. We just, I'm going to reduce the uh, opacity of that top layer all the way to about 10 or 20%. Uh, let's see where it suits. All right, so about 25%. Okay. Now that's, that's looking reasonably, reasonably realistic. If I turn that off, that's how it was before. That's how it is now. It's got that yellow tinge to help it mix into its environment. So I hope you picked up a thing or two there. Um, every scene has a, has a difference. But the key things are um, work with the levels, get the levels right, make the shadow, make the intensity match the background. If there's a lot of shadow in the background, then bring the shadow side up. If there's a lot of light, bring the light side up as well. Usually you're going to have to tweak those. Um, the other key thing is if if it is a diffuse environment, then that'll suit a diffused object. Go with that. So hopefully that uh, helps with um, bringing things um, like uh, of this nature into into um, into reality, sort of, or making them look as realistic as possible. Thanks for watching. Uh, any questions, leave me a comment. Thank you.